All right, so this is my homemade digger that I made at the end of last summer. Um, all hydraulically controlled, uh, four controls there, uh, powered by, I think it's like a Honda 11 horse or a clone or something. Um, which is a little oversized for this, but yeah, never a bad thing, eh? Uh, and then the engine powers a gear pump on a, a V-belt there, just a single V-belt, and it's a slight reduction there. So the pump spins a little bit slower. Uh, I don't know what the output of the pump is, unfortunately. Um, but the pump, he supplies uh, four of these log splitter valves. Just like plain old log splitter valves there where they, um, they've actually got a pressure relief, adjustable pressure relief there um, on each one. Um, and they're just, they're supplied just in series. So it flows into one, then out, out the return into the next one, do, 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 do sort of thing. Um, so what that means is, <clears throat> if you if you move one control and um, then go to use another one, uh, the oil won't just go and find the easiest way around. It'll be forced to go around both ways. It sort of do it'll move both surfaces at the same time, sort of thing. Um, the only problem there is because each of them have got their own um, relief valve there. If one dead ends or one of one of the movements dead ends. Um, and then another one dead ends, then that builds up, that doubles up the pressure on these valves sort of thing. It adds that pressure to the next one, um, which killed the last pump I put on there. That um, dead ended it and it blew the seals out of that one. So um, I put this uh, like relief valve in beforehand, before all of these log splitter valves, and that dumps straight back to the tank rather than flowing into the next valve sort of thing. Um, because that's all these ones do. These, the, um, the pressure relief on the log splitter just flows it onto the return line. Um, so yeah, so that helps sort of thing. I had to up the pressure in that one. Um, I made a little brass spacer and put it under the spring just to shove it down a bit more, but that seems to work, seems to work. Um, and yeah, the log splitter valves, we've got two on each side, uh, and I've jigged them up to work on a bit of a joystick there. And I've got uh, a UJ, I don't know if you can see that in the dark there. Ooh, a steering UJ off a Polaris Ranger, one of those buggy things. Um, and then a hydraulic accumulator off a loader or something, I think that was. And I cut it in half and use it as a top. Um, well, these little tabs on, got these little ball joints here. Uh, and I had to turn down, I don't think you can see that there. Turn half the, the, um, the hex off of a, a nut there to get these uh, joints just to turn a little bit more. See, they're right on the limit there sort of thing, but no, that actually worked out not too bad. And they worked the little valvey things, just like that. It's, it's I, I think it's slightly better than having four individual controls, but because there are any log splitters, it is still a bit sort of, it either goes or it doesn't go. There's not a lot of sort of half measures with it sort of thing, but yeah, that's what you get for not having proper servo control sort of thing. But no, I think for, for what it is, it sort of does the job pretty well. Um, it, yeah, it obviously slews as well. It's got the hydraulic motor there. Uh, if we go under here, we've got a, a Ford Mondeo wheel bearing as a center bearing. Oh yeah. And then a uh, Land Rover Discovery starting ring gear there. And then the, the gear from the starter motor is, I just welded that onto a little collar. And then that fits onto the hydraulic motor up in there. Uh, and that seems to work pretty well. Um, it does flop around a little bit, um, so I might end up putting some extra rollers in the front, putting a, a big round plate on the bottom there, and putting some actual rollers there to take sort of most of the weight sort of thing, but yeah, until it breaks, I think we'll be alright. Um, the, the frame here is just made out of a 50 mil box, all up round there, um, bit of plate across there, seat on top, lawnmower seat. Um, he folds up out of the way, got your fuel tank in there, you've got your hydraulic tank here with your, um, uh, this goes to the pump and these are your two returns, this one's from the pressure relief, this one's back from all the valves, uh, this is an old, um, I think it's an old mini bike air filter that he uses a, a, a breather thing there, um, the tank, the tank is just welded, uh, bits of plate and welded along there and ground back, nice and flat sort of thing and he bolts straight on, um, Hydraulic filter, he actually screws into the tank. I've got a fitting welded to the tank. Um, 
Um, sorry about the, the tape there. Oh yeah, by the way, if you're going to mask something, don't use uh, gaffer tape. Because uh, I went to peel it off again and it tore all the paint off the filter, which is annoying because it was a nice yellow colour and it matched that sort of thing, but um, yeah. What else? Uh, at the moment I've just got it on like a little skid unit sort of thing, so we've got two wheels at the back uh, and a blade at the front, so you sort of keep that at the front when you're digging and sort of ruffle that into the ground sort of thing. Um, and then the wheels, yeah, they just sort of roll along. The wheels, they're on like a dog leg assembly here. So you can uh, pull the pin out the axle, pull that little yellow pin out uh, and swap the legs over. Um, and then you can get it into some pretty narrow places. Um, the widest point then is these, these hoses that stick out a little bit, which join these up together, but yeah. You will get into some small spaces. Um, and what? Then we've got, yeah, all the hoses. All the hoses just come up along this sort of geometry. They follow as close to the pin where the pellets there as I could get them sort of thing. And they're wrapped up in this uh, snakeskin stuff, I think it's called. Uh, so I've got, oh my God, six hoses going up through there. And they're held on the boom by these little hydraulic clamps. I've got um, two, two welded to the boom there, and then another one piggybacks um, these other two to get these above, and then that sort of guides them nicely into the snakeskin there. Um, and they all sort of tuck up there. Some go that way, some go that way. Um, what else? Uh, the boom. Yeah, the boom's just made out of a 70mm box with this quarter inch hose going up it. This is a 80mm, 80mm out of diameter ram. Uh, 40 mil shaft, and I think it's 200. Is it 200 mil travel? Might be 200, 300 mil travel. I can't remember. Um, bits of 10 mil plate as gussets and stuff. Um, another bit of 10 mil plate. Uh, slightly smaller ram. I think he's 60 by 30 by 250 stroke. Um, and these are these are 25 mil pivots here. Um, these ones here are 30 mils um, with greases in them. Let's go under here. He's got a greaser on there on the actual ram, and these ones I've um, drilled into the end of the bar there, the, the pin, sorry, and put a greaser in there to sort of keep the greaser out of the way. Um, I've got these little pins here um, on the rams and on various bits, sort of thing. So that's that's um, a 30 mil pin, as you can see at that side, 30 mil pin, and I've welded a washer on and then ground it nice and flat there. Uh, and then this little clamp piece, sort of, it doesn't quite clamp it, it allows this pin to sort of float around a little bit, so the pressure is never on the, the bolt sort of thing, so that shouldn't come loose, that should just sort of ruffle around. Um, this little hanging point here uh, to guide the hoses up through, and if you ever want to pick it up with a high ab sort of thing, you hook it in there, hook it around the back, and then you should be all right. Um, these hoses here are clamped on the boom with, it's just a bit of angle, a bit of angle there welded on, and then underneath, Got another bit of angle bolted up in there, and that clamps that hose up in. And then the ends of these in the angle there, I've just sort of shaped off the metal a bit inside so it doesn't tear into the hose there. But uh, yeah, that seems to work. Another one of those little pin things. Um, and then everything, everything beyond here, all the pins are M20 bolts, um, just because that seemed a bit easier. Um, so I've taken some M20 bolts and then. There's like this little socket piece that's actually welded to the boom here, and that's that's just a, a 30 mil impact socket that I've cut up into lots of little slices, uh, and then welded the slices to the boom, um, and then that stops the pin turning sort of thing. So you're forcing the turning part to be on the the fatter part of the boom, sort of inside there. There's a, a big boss welded in there, so that yeah, it has sort of more meat to turn against sort of thing. Um, same there. Oh, I haven't put a greaser in there yet. Oopsie. Warnings. Please grease me. Oh, yes. Um, what have we got down here? Yeah, and 20 bolts again. With these little socket bits and this linkage. Um, what are the measurements here? I think they're between these two, they're 100. That's 100 mil. That's 100 mil. And I think. Oh, what is that? I think that's. 180 mil between these. That's 180 mil, and I think that's 180 mil as well. Um, 
which seemed to give it a pretty good crowd actually. He comes right up round and sort of empties right back again. Um, we seem to work, yeah. And then I've got this sort of somewhat of a, a quick hitch here, which is, well not a quick hitch, but you've got these two pins or bolts you can pull out. Um, and they're just held in by a couple of lynch pins there. Um, and they're again 20mm bolts um, and they're spaced 100mm centres. So if I ever want to make something again sort of thing, I just got to remember that I've got to make it 80mm wide and 100mm centres and then it should, should fit on there. Um, and then sort of last one on these, yep, the bucket, um, which bizarrely I actually made first out of all of this. Um, I off cut some metal and then looked at it and thought, oh, that nearly, nearly looks like a bucket. So I turned it into a bucket and I thought, oh no, I started making a digger. So a digger ensued. Oh yeah. It's just a bit of plate. Um, the actual back part around here is a bit of 150 by three flat. Um, and he's, he's not, it's not one continuous bend around there. He's kinked sort of every 40 mil, I think. Just put it in the sheet metal bender and sort of dragged it on round a bit. Um, and then up the top here where it ends, I sort of bent it on round and carried it right round the front there um, to sort of brace it so it wouldn't tear away sort of thing, which seemed to work. Um, the blade, the actual blade there is off of a subsoiler, which is like a, like a girt metal T that gets dragged through the soil. Um, and I shortened one up once upon a time and I had this little off cut. So I welded it on there and then carved these little teeth things out of it. And yeah, that seems pretty convincing too. Um, warning stickers, because that's professionals. Oh yes, yellow, because everybody loves a yellow digger. Uh, little trailer wheels there, because they're nice and cheap. Um, I might actually make like a little track unit up for it, because um, it is a bit of a pain this little bottom unit and it's not quite heavy enough sort of thing you go to go to take a big cut and it sort of just ends up lifting all the time so I might put yeah make, make up some either get some old tracks or uh, make some up sort of thing um, and then put a bit of weight in the base and a little blade hydraulic blade on the front sort of thing and yeah that might help but that is another kettle of fish I think because um, at the moment he's 360 slew because there's no hydraulic service to the bottom there um, and there's no real way of putting any hoses down through the centre there so if I was going to do tracks it would be um, I'd have to limit it to sort of um, 360 degrees but only, like stop at a point sort of thing so go around and dunk and then um, like come up against a lever that would write um, the lever that you're pulling on so that you can't actually make it go anymore sort of thing so you can only go back the way you came from but um, yes that uh, might be happening at a later date sort of thing, but we'll see how we go. All right, I suppose I'll have to dig a hole now.
Right, so there you go guys. Uh, just walked out the front of my house there. Down that little, whoo, down that little alleyway there. Um, yeah. Um, if you've got any questions, check them in the comments. Um, subscribe, like, and I'll catch you later.